Georgia here with you, aka VHS 82 apostrophe, with our ongoing Space 1999 series, episode 13, Collision Course, directed by Ray Austin, uh, written by uh, Anthony Turpeloff. It is, I would say, maybe my favorite episode to this point. Uh, a brilliant episode. Don't forget, Space 1999, Shout Factory put out an incredible Blu-ray release of this, both seasons and a, and a, and a, a supplemental disc. Uh, just an incredible um, thing that they did. And uh, and Kenneth Murr's book, uh, Space Exploring Space 1999, as a reference point, just an excellent, excellent resource. Um, so, Collision Course, man. Uh, this, I'm, this, 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 this episode is mind blowing, man. Basically, you've got right off the bat, you've got, um, the moon is on a collision course with this asteroid and they have decided to, to basically drop a few nukes on the asteroid, blowing it up there for eliminating the threat. Uh, in the process of dropping one of the nukes, Alan has a problem and they have to sort of just put off the timeline for just a moment in order to give him time to try to get out of there. Now, Really, in reality, no one really thinks, and it's a great moment with John Koenig. Uh, in fact, his eyes really begin to well up when he realizes he may never see Alan again. Um, the asteroid blows up, an incredible visual effect. Uh, Alan's ship is sort of blown back a little bit, but Koenig believes with all that, and this is, this is a show that pits the issue of faith against hard science. And it does so in a masterly way. Koenig, right from the beginning, uh, is our, um, what will seemingly become like a molder type character. Helen, Helena will be our, our Scully right from the beginning. She's our hard cynic, our hard skeptic. Now, Koenig, too, is pretty, pretty reasoned, but he, he will begin to be opened up to other things. And that will pit him against him and Alan both against the rest of Moonbase Alpha. So Alan basically comes up with this way, this three-way contact uh, way of contacting Alan ship if they get beyond the cloud, the radiation cloud, and get up there. Uh, so him and Paul go up there. It's like finding a, a needle in a haystack. But this alien voice sort of reaches out. Almost think uh, Luke and Obi Wan there in Star Wars. This alien voice suddenly Koenig hears in his mind. Here are the coordinates for your friend. And then, and then seemingly at the same time, this voice is telling Alan, wake up and get docking procedures ready. So you got this outside otherworldly alien voice intruding and almost in a, in a saving type way, in, in almost a divine providential way, more of a saving way, right? But this voice will only make an impact on Koenig, and Alan. Now, Paul, to his amazement, not really so much, but it should have stuck throughout the rest of the show. They find Alan. They dock up. They're able to get him. Now, when they get back to Moon, now while they're there in the ship, when Koenig is in there making sure Alan is okay, he looks out the windows and he realizes there is a much greater threat looming. And that is this planet that is roughly, I think they say it's 34 times bigger than Moonbase Alpha is looming in a, this is the real collision course. And so they race back to Moonbase Alpha and Alan or uh, Alan, of course, they're both, you know, checked for uh, radiation sickness, which they're cleared, but this will be what Helena will use to disregard what both will ultimately bring to the table throughout this show. Of course, the impact this alien voice will have on Koenig and also on Alan. Uh, there's a moment where Alan literally thinks he's having a vision, and he is. He's seeing her, but of course, this vision disappears, and it's Helena standing there. And Helena thinks, "You're you're nuts. You're you're nuts." So Helena really, it, it almost is a show where you almost kind of get angry with her from time to time with how she carries herself through this show. Now, Alan, there is the thought that they might be able to settle on the opposite side of this world, this world that they're about to collide with, although you do have the problem of the moon colliding into this world and not knowing what the impact of that is going to be. So he goes out there in quick like order to ascertain whether this planet is even habitable. Now, they can't know from moon base alpha because the radiation cloud. It's a lot of interesting things going on in here. But as he goes out, he gets taken forcefully, well, yeah, really against his will into an alien craft. It's there he will meet Ara, our... Are really our alien protagonist who will 
attemptively try to convince him, and really does to a fact, convince him that this has been preordained for a millennia, that she knew of this moment well before before almost she's seemingly before time itself it's weird um but this has all been preordained and it must happen this collision between the planet and the moon must happen in order for the moon to take its next stage in evolution sort of a, a, a mutation of next level spiritual living which we've already been sort of uh uh introduced to in earlier episodes um and so basically koenig is told Basically, this is the test of your command. And Koenig argues, look, they're not going to believe me uh, at all, period. Uh, because there's already been a plan that is being put into effect, which basically uh, basically is lying out a string of nuclear bombs that will create the awesome shockwave that will theoretically push the planet one direction and the moon in the other direction, just creating a, a safe buffer, avoiding the collision. Aura convinces John, this has to happen. My eternal, my e e e eternal salvation, really, in a way, uh, depends on this. And if you allow this plan to go into motion, I will be destroyed and all that we have been basically waiting for millennia is going to be tossed off by the wayside. And so John goes back knowing full well he is in for the fight of his life because the minute he steps, he steps into Moonbase Alpha and declares himself in this plan. We are to do nothing. We are to allow this collision to take place. Immediately, Helena, Victor, and Paul will set themselves against him. Now, there is a scene where, where Helena will make this grand case of why they should believe him. It's all a ruse just to calm John and make him think that, he, that, it, that they're on his side. The minute that meeting ends, Helena puts in uh, into effect with Paul, Paul taking over command. They're going to set this plan into motion. They basically drug John, lock, put security in front of his door, drug him, put him to sleep so that they can carry out this plan. Because as far as Helena is concerned, him and Alan both got radiation sickness and they're both just deluded. This alien voice will wake up John and just be like, you've been betrayed and this plan is going forward and you have got to stop it and then this races you towards the finale the great climax which ultimately john and alan are able to inject themselves in a way that prevents the pushing of the arming button and in your closing seconds as the planet looms it is a great moment where it really does the, the 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 feeling of absolute terror you can feel it like they really do a good job of selling this notion that we are only seconds away from death not knowing what stands before us and you know death and it's a great great moment but the minute that planet and the moon touch the planet's gone and the moon is just moving, and Helena mostly is left staggering. I, 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 I just didn't believe you. Now, John, being John, it's okay. You, I don't agree with this necessarily, but John, John's rationale is: Look, how could anyone not? consider or, or how can anyone not expect you to do anything but what you did considering what was before you what you were seeing and yet had she been successful all would have been lost and so he sort of you know rationalizes maybe just to make her i know it's not to make her feel better it's it's really he seems pretty serious at the very end and it almost like he's still in a contemplative state of not really understanding what has just transpired. This this show is really outstanding in, in that it, you know, in the end, at the end of the day, hard science is on the wrong side and faith is on the right side. And the fact that John was able to succeed, and Alan were able to succeed in thwarting the the plan that was put into effect allow this thing that had been waiting for a millennia to push, take its next step forward. It, it, it's, it's amazing because how many times if we're dealing, grappling with faith, 
How many times are we in the same position where we're confronted by too many voices that look at you and say, you're a nut, you're, 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 you're crazy, and I'm not for one second going to buy into one thought of what you're giving. And yet you feel like you're on the other side and you know that whatever it is that you are pushing, you are so determinedly, absolutely, you know you are right and no one can convince you otherwise. That is the incredible con construct of our world. That is the great conflict. I think at the heart of maybe everything. And that is that is this notion of... of uh, what is not seen, but yet felt and known against all that we can put our hands on and seemingly know, although sometimes those things are a roost to us, even though they may seem clear and plain, sometimes it's those things that are not clearly seen, but are known. They're known. And this is, a, and, and you see this running theme. This is, this show may be the thesis statement of the entire running show. This is maybe the moment where the, the, the writers and, you know, and, and the, the brains behind this entire show are putting forth this, e this eternal conflict that will go to the end of the age. And if, depending on what side you're on, it's really depending on the outlook of how this will end in the end. If you're on that of faith and you know how it's all gonna end, you, you, you know you know. But if you're on the other side, you believe you know how it's all going to end. And this is the eternal conflict. And this will always be regardless. You can't not have it. You're not. And, th and this show does a brilliant, brilliant way of showcasing this this conflict. Um, I, I just absolutely loved it. Like I said, it, it may be my favorite episode up to this point so far. Uh, unless another one just slightly outdoes it. We'll see. The next one is Death's Other Dominion. The title alone has got me jacked up, man. I, I, I know I have seen it once, but I'm, I'm having a hard time remembering what was what was going on there. So, ha, fabulous episode, man. Fabulous episode. I, I really, really, really dug it. And uh, I, I'm, you know, I, I almost wish these shows were really, that you could really see the shows build on one another in terms of what happened previously. Because um, I know they're all sort of, you know, release versus produced uh, are not one and the same thing here. And so you just sort of got to... Now, there is a theme that is strung out across the grand series. Uh, and then, you know, it's sort of picked up upon here and there, here and there, here and there. And uh, so, I, you know, it, it, this, this is interesting. But what's really interesting, too, in this show is early on, uh, you have the case where, you know, Paul, Paul seemingly forgets real fast that, that Alan... Or that John found Alan. Um, you got Victor uses uh, uses the word um, faith. You know, in the beginning, what we really need here is faith. You know, John's right. We need faith right now. And and and, and at Paul, what we need is a miracle, right? These things are implied, and yet those who say these things will put themselves on the opposite end of those things when it comes down to it. It's interesting. There's a lot going on in this thing. A lot going on in this thing. Um, the writing, my hat's off. I absolutely love this one. It's brilliant. It's great. Uh, so, until next time, episode 13, Collision Course. Uh, if you haven't got the, uh, I'm telling you, man. I was a kid in the 70s. I would have watched this. I had the toys. Good stuff, man. Uh, and I'm having such an awesome time revisiting this whole series like this um just good stuff man as always man as we uh make ready for the football season the bulldogs and the buffalo bills man going at it uh bills trying to get one dogs trying to win yet another one um uh, good stuff man september's always fun man fall's coming in and uh, space 1990 now i will say this real quick uh i may ultimately skip a week on this uh only because uh my anniversary weekend is coming up my 30th anniversary weekend God, 30 years uh, so I'm going to be away with my wife. And so I may end up skipping one week of Space 1999 um, because unfortunately those I got out ahead of myself, I've caught up to. And so now this one is actually going up appropriately the week before I'm going away. And so I'm not sure. We'll see. Anyhow, 
as always, man, as always, go Bills.